Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. We are excited to bring you this new series of us taking older YouTube videos, cutting them down to more manageable pieces where the idea is we can take highlights of testing methods and procedures that can be applied to all cars across the board. And of course, we'll bring you the fix too. Enjoy this video. Just turn the key on, don't crank it. <laughs> that is so cool. I mean, I've never seen that, ever. 1999 Subaru Impreza with a 2.2 liter engine. We are dealing with a no start situation and we were checking this out previously. We have already tried introducing fuel into the intake, no change at all. And so our next step was to check for spark. Just turn the key on, don't crank it. That is so cool. I, I mean, I, I've never seen that, ever. I, I've never seen a car have spark with just the key on, like that. And, and it's all four. I, I don't need to show you both coils. This is a way spark system. You know, this coil, there's one coil here, one coil here. Both coils, this is a current. So no reason to really go crazy as far as direction. We can clearly see we have an ignition problem. And something else that you can hear in the background is the cooling fan is also running all the time. You know, these, are, these might all be grouped together, but I just really, before we continue with this, and we have no idea what the problem is yet, to see this ignition system do that with just the key on, that is really, really cool. Here's a shot of our connections on the coil itself. Again, we chose this location because it's easy to get to. Let me move this plug wire out of the way so we can see on the camera where I'm at. You see I'm back probing my two channels that are my control circuits for the igniter which is inside of this coil assembly. Go ahead and just turn the key on. Don't don't crank it or anything. Just turn the key on. It's what we expected to see, isn't it? We expected to see some type of control signal here. We are definitely seeing that. And as far as our voltage level goes, it's a little bit higher than I thought. Our our blue area this is 10 and a half volts on that one and our our red trace same thing 10 and a half volts so we're going from zero to 10 and a half as far as where we go next you know i'm really not sure but i would like to see what the cam and crank signals look like going into the engine computer on top of this remember this is coming from the engine computer and the fact that this is here with the car not running does suggest maybe a main ground problem or, or something like that. Maybe we're missing a power feed to half of the computer board. And I've seen that sometimes where half the computer's powered up and it'll do crazy things. I don't like that the cooling fan's running all the time either. We could be getting feedback from the fan circuit, believe it or not. Uh, something crazy like that. So a lot of different directions we can pick. Let's throw cam and crank underneath here next and see what that looks like. Cam signal's easy enough to get to. We're right next to the battery. There's your camshaft on the left side of the engine driver's side. Cam sensor sits right above that. We're just back probing it. Crank sensor was a little bit more difficult, mainly because of where the harness was. And what we are doing is we are clipped in on the signal wire and that sits right above our harmonic balancer, if you want to call it that. So go ahead and turn the key on and let's look at that first. Okay, so you see our coils firing again. We were on a 20 volt scale before, so they looked bigger to you guys. You were used to looking at them, at them in that size. I'm now at a 50. And what we see right away is we don't have any cam or crank signals here. Now what we do see are spikes that are occurring in the cam crank signal wires that are timed exactly with our coil firings. But what we think initially with this is that that is because of the coil firings not the result of the coils fire so remember when you're turning coils on and off large magnetic field collapses lots of noise occurring in that engine compartment and i believe that that is an effect not a cause so let's see what this looks like cranking now Okay, that works. 
Something else to add, I think with our situation here, we actually have a little bit of a, a concern in that our injectors are also firing. And I didn't measure the injectors themselves. I'm just basing that on the fact that the injector bodies are very warm. And so let's just hope the fuel pump's not running because this was this is the a, a recipe for a hydro-locked engine. You know, we're in an enclosed classroom, we're starting to smell fuel. There's a safety concern here, no doubt. So here's my crank, here's my cam. Crank is my green trace, cam is this orange trace if you want to call it. There's a lot of noise in here and so I think what I'll do first is, is we'll zoom in on it and we'll take a look at just a smaller area of this. We can definitely see some sink uh, notches in this crank. That is definitely a cam signal and then we got a whole bunch of noise in here and we can actually filter that. I don't know if that will mess us up here filter our cam and crank. That makes it a lot more evident, doesn't it, as far as what we're looking at. So there's the filtered version of our cam and crank signals. And I think what we can, what we can take from this first is that it's not a cam and crank sensor problem that's causing this. You know, the computer needs good cam and crank signals to fire the coils. And, and they're there, and I don't know what exactly they're supposed to look like right now, but I, the thing is, they're not there with the key off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this real quick. I want to save this picture for myself, and then we'll think about what's causing this. You know, of course, I said going into this, we suspect with this kind of problem, anytime you have something, a computer that's doing things that it shouldn't be doing, you're worried about bad grounds, you're worried about power feeds, you're worried about maybe an alternator diode that has failed, but in our case we're not running the car, so an alternator diode really isn't in play here. But you know, that's where our thought process has been the whole time, and we're gonna most likely go in that direction, but again, I'm going to pause this, save this picture, we'll see where we're going next. Okay, I just saved this picture. Something else before I unfreeze this that I wanted to, to mention here. We saw our cam and crank signals, and I, I unfiltered this right now. But what we didn't see during a crank is the frequencies change within the coil firings. So again, it's almost as if the computer's not even using these signals and firing these down here. They're still coordinated exactly together, which they should not be. We never want to fire both coils at the same time ever. So they're not firing properly. The other thing that we don't like here, which is really suggesting a ground issue, is all of this noise that's in all of my signals. So keep that in mind. I think next direction for SOAR would be a ground issue based on the noise, based on these signals. And I think maybe an, a, a good next step would be to grab a sensor ground, doesn't matter which sensor, coolant sensor, TPS, whatever, just to see what the sensor ground circuit looks like because they're all connected will give me an idea if this computer does in fact have a bad ground, then I'm gonna have a very high elevated ground voltage signal on some of my critical sensors. I think that would be a good next step. Okay, and I saw no real change there other than you see that same noise that, uh, that we were seeing before and everything else, but again, I think that's coils firing that are interfering. You know, we don't want that noise in there, but. The fact that our voltage level is still very, very near zero with the key on is really telling us that's 20 millivolts. There's nothing wrong with the sensor ground circuit on this car. At least the initial view, that's, that's what we're seeing. So the other thing that I like to do in a case like this when you have a computer that's doing things it shouldn't be doing is to check the 5 volt reference circuit. So I'm just going to move the T-pin or my back probing pin over to the reference circuit on the map sensor and we'll take a look at it here. I don't like the noise. I could get rid of the noise if I use the sensor ground instead of battery ground. That's one of the things that we do when we have noise and signals. But again, that's not a cause, that's an effect. These coils firing, the injectors firing, doing things they should not be doing. Again, we're just trying to get some direction here and what we're saying right now is our sensor ground circuit is intact. All of these sensors share the same ground, so there's really no need to check other sensor grounds right now. I think the next step, truthfully, 
is going to be checking computer powers and grounds directly at the board. Unless I can think of something else in the process here, I think that's where we're going to go next. For this segment, I was not going to show this, but I guess it's good to hear a thought process. It's me and, and my students, if I could show you them. Right now we're all sitting around thinking about what did we miss? Where are we with this process? We've checked all of our powers and grounds. They look good. We've checked cam and crank signals and we, we don't see any interference in that cam and crank sensor circuit. This is looking like a faulty engine computer, but anytime it, it comes time to call this, it's all, it always feels uneasy. You, you're always thinking, what did we miss? And that's what it feels like to me right now. So I think off camera, we're going to talk about this. We're gonna talk about some of our variables. I'm, I'm hoping we, we did miss something. One thing that we could do is recheck our cam and crank signals at the computer now this time, because we have access to that a lot easier, see what they look like in there. I think that would be worth looking at. And then I'm still on this alarm system thing that what else did we miss? Something that's feeding a signal into this computer. I'm not sure. Um, I think we're going to recheck our cam and crank at the computer and then we're all going to talk about what what other areas we can check before making a call on this engine computer. Okay, fun stuff here. What we did in the last segment, and we didn't film all of this, we're ready to call the engine computer. And anytime, like we said before, when it comes time to call a computer, you're always questioning what you've done, what did you miss. We're worried about interference with this system. In light of this aftermarket alarm system, that we were told about. Really had us nervous. It sounds at times, cranking this thing, that it's hydrolocked from fuel. So what we did, we have channel three, so you guys are aware of what we're doing. We have channel three voltage we're monitoring, and that's on, on the number four, sorry, the number one injector, that's the fourth pin on the computer, monitoring the voltage. We also clipped an amp probe around that. So this is gonna be channels three and four that you're looking at on the scope. Current flow on four, voltage on three. Channel four, I've set that up on a negative five to 20 amp scale. We can narrow that to see this a little bit better if you want to. This is amperage now that we're looking at. And we're just under one amp of current flow here. Here's our measurement. 700 milliamps, the typical current draw of a saturated switch fuel injector. Here's what we know. This injector is on, it is spraying constantly. All four injectors are spraying all the time on this vehicle with the key on. Thankfully, the fuel pump isn't running all the time. Only when we crank it or cycle the key, and truthfully, we don't even know if that part's even working, if the pump's even turning on. Although I think we did hear the two second prime on occasion. So it's not a big deal, no, we're not worried about it. As far as direction for us, I think this really makes us feel a lot more comfortable putting a computer in this car. We have things that are happening that do not happen. There's no input that the computer's going to look at to keep the injectors on all the time. It just doesn't happen. Something failed inside of this computer, maybe a capacitor's leaking, went on the board, we're not sure exactly. The other thing is we don't know what caused this still, but we are, in my mind, 100% confident that we need an engine computer. We don't know why it happened, but definitely all four injectors are spraying all the time and the coils are firing when they should not be. All powers are good, all grounds are good. There is no outside interference from an alarm system or something like that, that was a concern no longer, we're going to put a computer in this car. Don't try to crank it yet, just turn the key on. That is a very good sign. So I, I heard the fuel pump run. I don't hear the cooling fan running. I don't hear the pulsing under the hood. Um, I, I may chance getting electrocuted here, but that's okay. Let's, uh, let's pull this plug wire off. And... All right, awesome. We got the key on. We don't have any spark occurring at the ignition coil. so. So far, so good. Now, the other thing that you want to consider before we crank this engine over is remember our injectors were on all the time. 
And so we may have hydrolock cylinders. And I know it cranked funny a few times, and, and we're, we are concerned about that. Any damage that could have been done would have been done before we ever got the car. So let's be clear about that. If we hydrolocked a cylinder, you know, and, and bent a connecting rod or something like that, I mean, typically that's not going to happen with a crank. Maybe if the car is running, uh, but this thing was cranked over and over and over and over for days before we ever got the car. So I'm not worried about a little bit more cranking here. Uh, but what we do have to be concerned about would be the plugs being soaking wet. Uh, so there's a real good chance this car does not start right now. All right, got the terminal tight. I think this battery's still too dead to try this, but go ahead and see if it'll start. All right, it's not. That is some major amperage. What we need to do, guys, we'll hit this charge and we're going to pull the spark plugs out, crank this over a few times with the plugs out of it, get all this extra gas out of the cylinders, dry the plugs off. Okay, we pulled two of the plugs out on the passenger side and disabled the ignition, tried to crank it, just see what the engine would sound like, and it still had that kind of sound like it was hydrolocked. This cylinder, the other two were actually dry but smelled like fuel. I don't know if the camera's picking this up, how wet it is. The outside of this, this is oil from a valve cover. That's not the issue. It would be the, the wetness on the inside. It looks like maybe we dragged it across the the bore a little bit and so there was some oil there but you can see how wet this plug is i believe this cylinder is full of gas so there is a safety issue here guys when you have something like this we need to get this gasoline out of the cylinder and we're going to crank it to do it but we're, what we're doing is we have the coil disabled the primary of the coil is disabled so we'll have no spark at all occurring here and uh, that's how we're going to do it. So we want to be safe about what we're doing. It wouldn't hurt for us to put a couple of rags over the, the holes of the of where the spark plugs go so we're not spraying fuel everywhere and you know have a fire extinguisher of course nearby. I mean we're pretty safe in what we're doing with the ignition disabled, but you can never be too safe, you know, in light of having a battery that uh that had a loose terminal and you have an arc that would be occurring at the battery while you're cranking it and you have gasoline guys we cannot be too careful here so this is the process we're going to go through uh, I need to get our last spark plug out and what we'll do is try to get you a shot of that and see see if uh, we get a big shot of the fuel coming out I'll try to catch that on the camera okay I'm on the driver's side and I really can't show you the passenger side obviously I got one camera and I think I have one shot at showing you this. I, I really believe we're hydrolocked and we're gonna have a ton of gasoline that's gonna come out of the cylinder here. So just go ahead and crank it again. I have the ignition disabled. Go ahead and crank it. Hopefully I don't get fuel on my camera. All right, good. Okay. A couple more times. There was all right, an amazing amount of fuel. I'm glad I got this on camera. There was an amazing amount of fuel that came out of this for you guys that didn't see it. I'll show it to you. There's a lot of fuel in these cylinders. We are absolutely hydrolocked from stock open injectors. We're going to probably dry these out a little bit better and put two shots of oil in each cylinder to help restore compression. Anytime you have a flooded engine, it, it actually helps restore compression because a thin wall of oil is really key in having good compression. and it's pretty much gone we call this cylinder wash so i'm not going to film this part but we're going to uh, dry these out better crank it some more probably unplug the fuel pump relay or disconnect the injector so they're not firing put a little bit of oil in each cylinder and uh, clean all this up then we'll put it back together and and see how she starts i know i mentioned this already but i want to show it to you oil contamination or fuel contaminated oil we believe we have it Take a look at our, our dipstick here. And uh, I don't know if I can actually show this on the camera, but our, our full mark is actually right here where my thumb is. And our oil level is actually, uh, let, me, let me check it again, I screwed up here. Our oil level is right here. It's right here on the stick where my thumb is and where it should be is right here. So we are way up here. Where'd all this extra, quote, oil come from? It's not all oil. There's that much gasoline in this crankcase. So things to remember when you have something like this, 
that you know engine damage could have occurred. We don't know yet. We haven't heard this car run. Um, I think our call of the bad computer is still good. Uh, I would like to hear the engine run. We're going to do all the steps we can to try to make it run, but we need to not feel bad if it doesn't, too. So um, again, we're filming live. Let's clean this up, see if we can get this thing running, and, and definitely we're going to do an oil change on this, too. All right, I have this battery charger on a, on a start mode. I don't really like to do this. The battery's weak. We're fighting a lot of different things here. Go ahead and crank it again. Nice. I was scared there for a second. Did you hear the popping through the intake? I was worried about a you know, valve issue, connecting rod. I don't know, you hide your locking engine, anything can happen. Just leave it idle, please, so we don't have to talk. I can get my voice on camera. Well, I'm a happy camper right now. That is a definite fix. Uh, I don't know, I think, I think that was uh, a little bit different than what we've been doing as far as video work. And uh, I think this was a real good one for you know, the process of calling a bad engine computer, you know, it's never easy to do that. This one ended up being easy at the end because we had four injectors that were on all the time and, and a coil that was doing something it should have never been doing. But I think we talked about a lot of the variables. We checked computer grounds, we checked for interference, we checked the five volt reference circuit. Everything was looking normal except for the coil firings and the injectors. And, we still don't know what happened. The car came to us with a dead battery. You know, it came to the garage for a, uh, you know what, shut this off. We don't want to run this long. We still have to change the oil. Uh, this car came in, you know, to the garage with a leaking fuel tank. And then the battery went dead and it never ran again after that. What we saw here had nothing to do with the alarm system. That had us going for a while. And you know, what does changing a fuel tank have to do with a, a bad engine computer? We don't know. We know the battery went dead. We know the negative terminal was loose. There is a very real possibility here. Let me turn this off in the start mode. Just turn that charger down. Um, there's a very real possibility that some type of voltage spike from either jump starting this, putting it on a high amp charge like I just had it on with a loose terminal voltage spike, or maybe the key was on when that occurred. And look, the other thing too is we can't blame the garage Sometimes things just happen, and uh, I don't want to point fingers at them either, but the fact is we have a faulty computer that we don't know, truthfully, what the cause was. We can, we can uh, theorize if we want to, but we're not sure. So I hope you guys like that. Bad computer on a Subaru. I've never seen anything like that. That was fun. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the highlights of this case study. If you have any questions about the testing methods being shown or you'd like to learn more about my process, click on the link in the description for the full length video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and more importantly, make sure you click on that bell icon to get notifications of all new uploads.